Welcome to another edition of Behind the Wall with VOA Middle East. I'm Managing Editor David Hutchins, and we're here to tell you the story of the Arab Spring, primarily through social media. Today's focus is Syria. We begin today with senior reporter Cecily Hillary, who has always been reaching out to dissidents and activists through social media. Cecily, hey. Hey. Uh, tell me, what, are you, what intelligence are you picking up in Syria today? Uh, well, there's been violence across the country, protesters coming out, military and the thugs coming out after them. I think m the most important uh, center of all the demonstrations today has been Hama. Uh, as you know, it was the scene 30 years ago of a veritable massacre by Bashar al-Assad's father, Hafez. Uh, he went after and killed 30,000 uh, residents of the city, um, supposed Islamist insurgents. Today, we were braced for heavy protests. Uh, people had feared the worst. During the week, some thousand inhabitants of Hama escaped to neighboring villages. Um, and there very well could have been a, a huge crackdown, a lot of uh, deaths, violence. But interestingly enough, last night, uh, the U.S. ambassador to Syria, uh, Robert Ford, showed up in Hama uh, and completely diffused the situation. Uh, he visited with opposition members. He was greeted with cheers and roses and olive branches thrown at his uh, car. Uh, and in many ways, people say that his visit stopped, saved the people of Hama. Now, you mentioned in 1982, uh, when nearly 10,000 people are estimated who've been killed yes. by Hafez al-Assad. I'm not sure you could probably you know, have that again in the modern times because everybody has a cell phone. You have people aggregating that. I mean, there's such a transparency now to what's going on. Uh, in fact, you've been looking at this video, but you also spoke to somebody um, today on the ground in Damascus. Tell I did. Uh, he calls himself Edward Dark. He is uh, uh, an activist. Uh, and let's watch the clip to hear what he had to say. What do you know about the situation so far? It's been a few hours since prayers ended. What are we seeing across uh, the country? Well, basically, you're seeing a pattern that's, that's being repeated every Friday. Um, people gather for, for prayers uh, at mosques, and then after that, um, they, they, they protest. In some areas, it's almost impossible to protest because there's a heavy presence of thugs and security. In other areas, they, they're basically free to protest. Where are we seeing the greatest military presence today? Well, military, it would have to be, uh, you mean inside cities or on the outskirts? Mm, either way. Well, well, on the outskirts, I mean, you still have Dara, uh, which, is, which has been like that for, you know, a couple of months now. You have tanks outside Hama, you have tanks outside Homs. They've been there for over a month. And you have military activity in villages and in towns across the, the, the province of Idlib. Hama has been surrounded in, uh, in recent days by the military. Um, there's been strict control there, and yet we heard yesterday of a possibility that the tanks moved out. Uh, what do we know and what relationship might this have to the visit by the U.S. ambassador? The massive demonstration. Uh, as last Friday, you know, numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you, the situation in the last three days in Hama has, has been very, very tense. I mean, you, you had um, local volunteers and revolutionaries setting up roadblocks, burning ties, etc., to try to prevent security forces from entering and making arrests. Um, eyewitnesses there have, you know, spoken of of busloads of security forces trying to enter certain neighborhoods with, with lists they have of people they want to arrest. Um, the people are fighting back, basically, with you know sticks, with stones, with, with whatever they can. Um, so far, you know, I think a couple of hundred have been arrested, as I've heard. Um, there seems to be some sort of negotiation also going on between uh, the security forces and the people in these neighborhoods through loudspeakers. So, I mean, they, they'd say, you know, you know, remove the roadblocks and we'll go out of the city. We we'll restore electricity and water if you if you hand over you know these people that we want. It seems to be going like that. Um, today, I think there's been a complete withdrawal of the security forces. The people have been allowed to protest, and if you, obviously you've heard the American ambassadors and the French ambassadors are there, which is, you know, I mean, um, so so it's out of the question that the security forces would attempt any sort of violence there today. What has the reaction been to the visit by the two ambassadors? 
Well, you see, it, it, it's, it was actually very surprising. Um, the thing is, it, it's, it's a pretty confused picture because, I mean, you have certain activists in Syria saying, well, you know, this, this looks a bit fishy. I mean, how could he guarantee his safety? How did he come to Hama? I mean, we know there's roadblocks, we know there's security, we know there's, you know, it's, it's not a safe area. I mean, even Syrians think twice about going to Hama now. So what they're saying is this has to be prearranged, you know, with the regime. Uh, what the regime is saying is, uh, you know, this is just uh, uh, intervention in, in Syrian internal affairs. That this proves that the revolution in Syria is actually manipulated and backed by by the West, by by outside forces. So yes, it's a pretty confused image. Personally, I think it's it's a good it's a good thing. Well, Edward from Aleppo, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Now we're sitting here with reporter Hina Simnani. She's our crowd map expert who's been looking at aggregated and curated tweets and direct email reports from Syria to give a picture of what's going on the past few weeks. Regarding to Hama, Hina, what are you seeing? Well, with Hama, there have been a lot of peaceful protests. However, there are mass demonstrations. A lot of people are coming out. But in regards to any violent incidents, there hasn't been any today. And we've been using Behind the Wall for how long? Well, we've been using it since early June. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of violent incidents, such as arrests, det defections, civilians being killed, so soldiers being killed. But in regards to today, there hasn't been any violent incidents. Hina, we're relying on uh, crowd mapping to get our information. The Syrians are also using Shahidi. Um, tell me about the Syria tracker and, and what's the difference between the two? Yeah, well, the Syria tracker is used by activists. Uh, they've been using it for their own purposes, so they have different categories such as water tampering, food tampering, any announcements that have been made, any articles in uh, local papers, things like that. We've been using Behind the Wall as more of a journalistic tool. So we have different categories. It kind of balances the news out. So for example, we have a category called civilians being killed by soldiers. And then we also have another category called soldiers being killed by civilians to get both sides of, that, uh, of the news. Finally, we're here with video producer Todd Grosshans who's been looking at user-generated video from sources like Ugarit News and Shamps News Network coming out of Syria. Todd, uh, what are you seeing today? Well, there's hundreds of thousands of protesters still in Hama. Obviously, these folks are not intimidated by Assad security forces. Um, so it, it seems to be the, uh, really the, no evidence of any violence whatsoever. But, and I haven't seen any uh, evidence of any violence on video um, anywhere in the country. But there is evidence of a security presence in Damascus. Uh, you can see security forces. I don't know if they're army, military. I don't know exactly who they belong to because the video is a little, uh, a little unclear, but they're there, and, um, but they haven't really attacked anybody yet. Now, we are hearing uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and in other social media venues that there has been violence elsewhere, uh, estimates of as many as 10, possibly even 13 dead. Uh, the first casualty of the day was in Dumer, which is a sort of a suburb of Damascus. Uh, I've heard two dead in the central commercial center of Damascus, Midan, after security forces opened fire. Uh, in uh, Baniyas, we have someone dead, a 50-year-old man. Again, this is all on Twitter. It can't be confirmed. But a 50-year-old man was shot dead by security forces. So I, th I think uh, as, as we reach the end of the evening, we'll probably hear. Yeah, I wanted to say we have to remember that's up till now. Yes. Um, anything can happen, as we well know, any, anywhere in the country. So we'll, we'll obviously keep watching. Thanks, guys, and thanks to Hina. That's another Behind the Wall Syria. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.